Well, NASA is launching a first-of-a-kind satellite. It's called NISAR, and it's a total game changer for important information about our Earth. And here to explain how it works and how scientists hope to use the new technology is NASA's acting SMD director, Associate Administrator, Dr. Mark Clampin. Good morning, Mark. How are you doing today? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, tell us a little bit about this NISAR satellite and what makes it so different than the other satellites that are up uh, over Earth. So NISAR is an Earth observation satellite. It's actually a partnership with the Indian Space Research Organization and is designed to essentially take a 3D picture of the Earth's surface. So it's a radar mission, and you can see that enormous dish there. That dish beams radar signals down to the Earth, they bounce back, and we measure them. And that allows us to detect changes in the surface of the Earth down to a precision of about one centimeter over an area roughly half the size of a tennis court. So this allows us to do a lot of different um, science and a lot of different uh, observations that will benefit our community. So we can make major contributions to agriculture. We can help with hazards, for instance, things like earthquakes, volcano eruptions. We can measure landslides, measure shoreline uh, changes. So we can do a lot of things with this satellite that really benefits society. And then, of course, we can also measure glaciers and um, sea ice as well. You know, this is pretty incredible to be down to that precise level of a centimeter. And as you mentioned, uh, you can see uh, bulges in the Earth's surface. You can see mountains being built, basically, with uh, that type of precision, can't you? Yes. I mean, it, we're just so excited to launch this satellite and start operating it. We think it's really going to be a game changer, as I think you said at the beginning, for a number of different um, you know, areas that I discussed a few minutes ago and really, you know, provide us with sort of breakthrough data that we can advance our understanding of the planet. Now, when you put a bird like that up in the sky, how long is its uh, operational lifespan? How long is it going to uh, be up there operating for you? So we design these missions to have what we call nominal lifetime, but many of them operate beyond that nominal lifetime. So this particular spacecraft will uh, normally operate for three years. There's a couple of months at the beginning where we actually have to do what's called commissioning, which is, as you can see in the video that's shown right now, unfolding that big radar dish and getting everything put into place so that we can start doing observations. And then, of course, the first thing we have to do is calibrate it. So a few months at the beginning and then a three-year lifetime. Well, just getting that dish unfolded, I mean, that's a, a marvel of technology in and of itself, isn't it? I mean, a, a lot of things really have to go right just to make this thing operational. That's, that's true. And, you know, we, like everything we build and fly, we do a lot of testing to make sure that it will work on the day. And we've flown other large deployable structures like this in the past, uh, a mission called uh, SWAT. Uh, we've also... Uh, built and flown the James Webb Space Telescope, which also had large deployables. We're, so, you know, NASA has a lot of experience doing this, and we really understand how to test these structures before we launch them. Oh, yeah. yeah there's no doubt. You guys definitely know what, uh, what you're doing. Uh, how is this going to aid in uh, emergency services and rescues and areas like that, first responders? <laughs> So um, it, in, you can think of things like, uh, for instance, if I, you know, take an example, fires, you know, it can uh, help first responders understand um, because it, it is doing measurements uh, that allow us to understand how many, you know, what kind of trees are there and their height. So essentially how much stuff can burn. It can also provide us with... Um, information after a fire, you know, allowing us to monitor the regrowth uh, as the, an area recovers after fires. Uh, we can also use it, for instance, in the case of floods, to actually measure the depth of the water in a flooded area and uh, the speed at which the water might be moving. So it allows us to provide a lot of data for different scenarios that really allow first responders to um, help, help um, restore uh, 
things back to normal as quickly as possible. And before we let you go, let's get your website so our viewers can find more information. Yes, so this uh, mission is being documented at the nasa.gov backslash NASA. And uh, I'd also suggest uh, going to the YouTube channel where there are lots of videos that explains how, how it works and where you will also be able to see it launch. Well, I got to thank you for joining us and uh, for telling us a little bit more about this new technology coming online. Thank you very much, Dr. Mark. Thank you.